just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, brought to you by Bloke Beer. Make sure to get in your local, grab a case of Bloke Beer. We've got a store locator on our website, blokeinabar.com. You can put in your postcode or your address. It'll show you the nearest stockers of Bloke Beer. We're in every single Celebrations, Bottolo, IGA Plus Liquor, and Porter's Liquor in New South Wales and ACT. So make sure to get in your local, grab a case of Bloke in a Bar. We're in hundreds of other stores across Queensland, New South Wales, ACT, Victoria, uh, and it's a beautiful, easy drinking beer. It's a beer for blokes that turn up for their family, mates, and good times. But I've got the great Connor Watson here. How you going, brother? Good, brother. What a um, what an introduction as far as stores. <laughs> That's crazy how fast you've grown, eh? Like I remember speaking to you a couple of years ago, and yep. you're killing it then. But every store in New South Wales, eh? Every celebration, like so, if there's a celebrations, Bottolo. Porter's Liquor or IGA Plus Liquor in New South Wales and ACT, they'll stock bloke in a bar beer. So pretty much everyone. Uh, well, at, well, Dan Murphy's is obviously the big dogs. Uh, ah, yeah, um, yeah. But Celebrations and Bottle are they're like they're independent. So we're all in independently owned stores and that. So yeah. Yeah. It's because it, it, it happens gradually. You don't appreciate what you're saying. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, obviously, if me from a few years ago said like, you're going to be in hundreds of stores across all of these places, I'd be like, Bro, that's going to take like 10 years to get to that. Mm. So, yeah, so lucky. But we're here for you, bro. We're here for you. I mean, obviously the off-season. How yes. you been? How's the off-season been going? Yeah, it's been good. I did a little stint over in Bali, got back like last Tuesday. It's a, a rite of passage for any rugby league player <laughs> in Bali. You see all the other boys over there. Oh, yeah, fuck, how you going? <laughs> yeah, we, um, we kind of got there uh, just a bit earlier mm. than like the whole rugby league community <laughs> that goes over there. So I... Um, I jumped on because obviously Kalen and Croaks and sort of that Johnsy and a few of that Randy, Bradman um, and Tex. Mm. Tex is leaving the mm. hole. So they were all going. And then once we um, sort of lost, they were like, come stay with us. Mm. And I thought it'd be a real good opportunity, especially like with Tex, just before mm. he goes over to England and mm. get a bit of time with them. So I jumped on their trip and it was like literally – pretty much too early I think for everyone so I started oh, really? to see like towards the last couple of days because my missus mm. come over yep. for the last five days and then um then boys went home and I started to see like a few more footy players so <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy I eh? like the, it's so far away from Australia but they all just gravitate towards that one spot yeah now there's a rumor going around that I won't say who it Rumors. was but one of the boys <laughs> yes may have got a full leg sleeve one of the boys. I'm not going to say who. You'll see it next year. You'll see it. And let's just say it wasn't in the best state on the way home. Oh, yeah, it was gnarly. <laughs> so bad. Like the. So it was a two day job for him. I think oh it was about. God. I think he might have said 16 hours over two oh. days. And we went in one day to visit him. Um, Kalen, Crokes, and I, we just drove in there and, mate, like he, he was going through the ringer. And then uh, that night, we ended up going out and we're out having like a feed for dinner and then we're, we're going to go um, out to Mexico, which is just the classic place where yep. everyone goes. And he's like, man, boys, I, ne I need to go home. I need to change shorts. Yep. So he goes home because all his pants were too like tight on yeah, his leg. Yeah, rubbing on it. Oh, raw tattoo. Not, not great for the big leg sleeve. So he grabs his... Um, he had a pair of Australian schoolboy <laughs> shorts. Oh, <no. laughs> if that gives away the clue who played for Aussie schoolboys, that was with us. Oh. And they were the only pants that were like baggy enough that it wasn't skin tight on oh, his legs. Oh my God, bro, just and stay he, home. Yeah, I know. And then the last night he ended up staying home. He was too sore. And then like, there's so many funny videos of him walking in the airport, couldn't straighten his leg. Oh, Yeah. Was the flight on the way home, was he like, bleeding in that or yeah i i um because i stayed, oh, you stayed. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah and then uh the boys sent like a video because they caught the train from sydney back up mm. and he like had sat his leg down for 30 minutes picked it up and like ink or like whatever oh, it was was like no all way. over the seat so holy yeah. shit but it's a pretty gnarly tattoo oh my he looks God. pretty um pretty tough so have you seen it since I've just seen videos of it. Is yeah. it healed okay? Or it looks good now. Really? Wow. I was yeah. I was worried that it was like infected because yeah. I didn't know they had oozed that much. But in saying that, the tattoos I've got have been like a little, a little word tiny here. Ones yeah, a couple yeah. couple numbers. So I no, haven't been filled. I can't up wait properly. for people to see who it is because it's that's hilarious. Yeah. And he just got on a whim, eh? Um. Yeah. I think what happened was. 
he was like pretty keen to get a bit and then <laughs> when they got there the first couple of days because i wasn't there till a bit later um they met some like local barlow guys and yeah one of them was like my mate owns a tattoo shop went down there and that, that was like the cheapest out of all the quotes he got so he was like you beauty yep. but he's <laughs> just a full sleeve on my leg because it's cheaper yeah 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 oh my god Tr it's, it's a lot of trust isn't oh it oh my god and didn't he just walk in and just go oh yeah I like <laughs> yeah that. a couple of the things are like <laughs> he doesn't even know what the, the meaning <laughs> is for them got oh. some like egyptian um what are they called the heart the gods or whatever the highly Oh, uh, hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics, yeah. 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 Oh, I can't say that God. word. But yeah, yeah. And they were just like, yeah, we'll go with those, those <laughs> couple there. You know what? It's, it actually makes it better because it's like, that's so rugby league. Like, yeah. that's, if there could be anything more Aussie and footy, it's doing something like that when you're over there. Yeah. Um, how's it been for you guys? You personally, obviously, it's a really interesting year for you guys because, like, mm. you started, you know, like way further back than I assume you would have. I know you had a, a very. St stop and start preseason, if I understand correctly. Yeah. And then the end of the season, all of a sudden, it was like, wow, like, you know, you're hitting form. And then all of a sudden, like the last game, mm. you know, a mixture of plenty of things, but a lot of it had to do with you lost Teddy, you lost Angus, you lost Tupo as well. Yeah. Like, what's the feeling like after the season you had? Yeah, I think we were really disappointed. Hey, I was thinking about it um, the last couple of days and – I reckon like the Mad Monday was one of the saddest. That sad like, Monday. Yeah, one of the yeah, the sad Monday. So, um, yeah, because we started the year <clears throat> and we we're very disjointed, like just trying to work it all out. You know, there's a lot of combinations that hadn't played together before, or like different sides of the fields and stuff. And then once we worked that out, we had that game against Penrith, and it was a really tight game, and we felt like we probably blew it. Like mm. we, there, there was a chance there for for us to beat them, and um, after that we knew that like we were ready to to give it a crack and we had the buy and then come back and went on that eight game winning streak and we worked out like our style of footy and it just felt like we were going to be there at the end yep. like we we're going to be thereabouts and then you know we had that good win against Souths uh the last game the, the opening of Allianz which was yeah, it was amazing to be part of. And then, you know, the next week we come out and um, we just didn't play footy. Like we just were worried about, too worried about what else was yeah. going on and just lost our cool. And yeah, it was, um, yeah, really disappointing because we knew we should have went further than we did. And um, yeah, it felt like we were playing the style of footy that would really, you know, give the competition a shake. Mm. It's interesting because... You, you, you play this like, especially towards the end of year, like this super aggressive style of footy, like very, you're taking it to the other forward pack, you obviously Lodge, Hargreaves, like alphas of the competition. Yeah. And yet it's, it's I guess, a, a real lesson learned of sometimes that can be, you've got to just find a way to balance that mm -hmm. super aggressive nature with, oh, we actually got to play footy, like we need yeah. to play a bit of footy. Yeah, because when you're, you're playing the edge like that, mm. it can so easily boil 100%, over. Yep. Um, and like, uh, you know, the Storm game was a really good example of us like playing on the edge, mm. but still coming up with the plays and like playing footy when we needed to. And mm. yeah, where in the South game, we we're playing on the edge, but we just took it too far. And then mm. when we got opportunities, we didn't execute and we were just sort of, yeah, a bit all over the shop. So I know like, that's something we'll definitely be working on in the preseason is like keeping our cool under pressure and because you you need to have a physical presence like yeah. you need jared and rads and lodgy and that to 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 play on the edge but yeah. we also like need to not let it boil over and affect everyone because yeah. like even me i was in there yeah. <laughs> grabbing blokes <laughs> what, you in troll? yeah me and troll <laughs> like yeah oh yeah i remember there's a picture hey eh? you yeah. and troll yeah, did you just have a, a laugh after it yeah yeah to be honest i, I didn't really i didn't get a chance to speak I, to I just said like good game or whatever after yeah, i was yeah. filthy i was more filthy than but. anything but <laughs> it was one of the yeah it was really really disappointing so yeah it's um could have picked a, a different bloke other than the big latrell yeah i know it was probably wrong weight class <laughs> i had that once at training um and like i don't know i i think when i was back at newcastle we used to um training sessions would get a bit heated and like mm. um it was always like 
Clem and like me going, I would be stirring him up. Yep. And then one day I was like stirring DSAF up and something happened. I tackled him <laughs> and he got up at Mark and pushed, pushed me. <laughs> I pushed him back and he just looks at me and he's like, wrong weight class, bro. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you just ran off. <laughs> That's a fair point. That's a fair point. So yeah, I'll stick to yeah. um, grabbing blokes my size next time. Other utilities of, yeah. of the bench or hookers and that. <laughs> um, Okay, so like, take us back to a young fella. Yes, um, you know, uh, you obviously people played for the Knights, but you came through the Roosters. You were born mm -hmm. in Dubbo. Uh, Dubbo. What, what was it? Did you live in Dubbo for long, or did you move to uh, uh, Avoca Beach quite young? Yeah, I was quite young. I think I was about four or five when I left. Mm. Um, so all my family's still out there. Like, was back out there for a wedding on the weekend, um, and then it happened like. Mum and dad would go on holidays to Avoca and then just loved it and mm. um, just thought there was probably more opportunity for us kids if yeah. we went down to the coast and got a little bit closer to Sydney. So really grateful for that. Like had an amazing childhood growing up at Avoca. It was so good. Learned to surf as soon as I got there and then um, fell in love with footy when I was about six or seven. My mm. um, dad always mm. played, so I was always around like the footy environment. I started playing soccer because mum wanted me to play soccer. And then yeah. I remember uh, a ball got like kicked and it smacked me in the nose. <laughs> nose started the bleeding. Beak. Yeah, the beak. Uh, hey, you the you little beak. beak. <laughs> 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 and then I was like, nah, I'm not playing soccer anymore. Really? Like crying. Yeah, I was like, nah, I want to play footy. Oh, far out. Oh, man. So I went and, um, yeah, played all my juniors, started at Terrigal Sharks, and then went over to um, King Cumber in the tens because. All my mates I went to school with, they were all playing soccer originally and there was only one bloke and he was playing for Terrigal. Mm. And then all my mates started playing for King Cumber, So I went over there and played with them and yeah, went all the way through, started high school at um, St. Edwards at East Gosford. Mm. It's pretty crazy. Like out of that school, even like in the years that I was there, you had like the Safidi brothers who oh, were yeah. the year above me, um, Tom Starling, mm. who was like two years below me. There's a couple of like young kids, Sandon Smith, who is part of the Roosters um, squad. We actually, you know what? We were doing like a review the other day and we were like, surely Sandon Smith's getting shit from the boys because Brandon Smith is coming to the, the club. I haven't even, hasn't even mentioned it. I haven't even thought of that. I would be, I'd be like, hey, brah, like, is it Sandon Smith, Brandon Smith? Like, who's, who's the real Smith here? <laughs> I like that. I'll take that back to training. Yeah, so Sando, um, yeah, there's a heap of... Um, boys that went to Eddie's or even the coast. Like it's been pretty cool to see Nico obviously won the daily M yep. grew up playing against him and Scotty mm. Drinkwater and yeah, all these lads. So it's been pretty cool. And so it's Northern New South Wales. That is or Southern central coast. So like in between Newcastle and Sydney. Okay. So like yeah. just, yeah. Central Which, coast, yeah. North of the central coast kind of thing. Yeah. As in the Northern part of the central coast. Yeah. The, uh, well, Nico was South cause he was way, way, you might okay, okay. Yeah. Where Bradman's from. Sorry, Bradman went to Eddie's as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like. So you had guns there in that yeah. area. It's such a, a rich, you know, I speak about it quite a bit on the podcast, but like that Newey area, mm. has so many guns coming through that get taken other club. It's absolutely crazy. Like, yeah. um, you know, for example, I think Nico was there. Nico and Scotty Drinkwater in that area. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Latrell. Trell, big boy corner was from yeah. around there, wasn't like he? Like I was originally there too before yeah. I had come back down here. Oh, okay. So you were with the Knights. Yeah. So like this real dodgy thing happened <laughs> when I was like 16. <laughs> mm. So I played um, Harold Matthews for the Central Coast Centurions. They were at the time. Mm. Safidis were on my team. Yep. And um, signed like a, what was it? A scholarship. Yeah, 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 the good old scholarship. <laughs> it was like 500 bucks or yeah. something to play. Oh, Harold it. Matthews there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought I was on. And then, <laughs> um, but they had a partnership with the Knights. Mm. And then the Knights wanted to get me up there. So they like had asked the coast basically if they could sign me and, and get me up there. And <clears> um, then I ended up getting a scholarship to go to Knox Grammar. Mm. And then the Knights were like, cool, just do the high performance thing up here mm. and don't worry about playing like SG ball, just go and play your school footy and stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And then I got a little bit over rugby union. I, w I was playing outside centre. I wasn't getting much ball. Yeah. And then so Peter Tunks, 
remember Peter Tungs used to play for the uh, Bulldogs and Souths front row. Played for Australia and New South Wales. He yep. won a couple of comps and stuff. And he was coaching the Southeastern under 17 side. And that had like Nat Butcher, Grant Garvey, um, Liam Coleman, which yep. is um, Tugger Coleman's son, Jake Trindle, Tricky Trindle's son. Yep. Like that was the stacked, stacked. team. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, if you're keen, mate, just come over and run around. So I went to go join the thing. And then the coast like put a stop to me playing club footy in. Oh, in, really? Because it would have been against them. Well, no, because like I was just playing club. I wasn't oh, even okay. playing rep because yep. they thought I was trying to join South. Oh. But then I thought I had like the Newcastle contract. Turned out they hadn't lodged it to the NRL. Oh my God. <laughs> or to whatever it went to. Yeah, yeah. So then um, I had to pay back the 500 bucks to the Central no Coast. Way. <laughs> yeah, for them to release me to play club footy in Sydney. So What? Yeah. So what did Newcastle do? Did they just go, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, that was, they were like, um, Peter Tunks was like, you didn't lodge it, rip it up. He's not... Um, yeah, because yeah, I was like obviously a bit like, oh, they didn't even lodge it. So he's like, just told him, rip it up. He's not coming. Oh, and then you had to pay it back. I had to pay the 500 back to the Central Coast. Mum, mum and dad did. I didn't have 500 bucks oh at 17. So that is bizarre. And yeah. then like to force you to pay it back. Because what did you even do wrong? Yeah, well, I was just trying to play club <laughs> footy in Sydney and they wanted me to play on the coast. That was their thing. Yeah. And I think that was shitty with me because. I'd try to leave the Central Coast to go play for the Knights SG Ball team. That was like the whole... Didn't they agree to it with the Knights? Yeah, it was just this real muddy like partnership. And that's why I, I, the Knights didn't work on the coast. And mm. like, the Roosters obviously in there now with the Central Coast Roosters program. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And then played... So from that competition, because our side was stacked, mm. um, we had like scouts from all the Sydney teams sort of come and watch and then did you did you already feel at what age did you kind of feel like oh well like I might be there might be a direction for me to get into a system here yeah I thought when the Knights thing happened that mm. like I was on the right path I was always a smaller kid so mm. but I always was really fit and was quick so I, mm. Um, but I was always told I was too small. So then when like I got to the age of 16, 17, I was just like in the gym heaps, <laughs> yep. bit vain, like probably was more doing it to <laughs> yeah. get jacked. Get aesthetic. Yeah, for the, for the girls. But, <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I I just sort of got bigger and bigger and then it was, then it was like strong enough to, and that's probably the key is being strong enough, not yeah so much big enough like you need those big boys but mm. if you're going to mix it in the middle with everyone you just got to be strong enough so yeah absolutely it's uh it's interesting how you see like for example if you look at like preston campbell you'd be like mate like no way no he's way. way too small to play first grade but how many tackles does he break and it's not necessarily by strength but because he puts people in awkward situ awkward uh scenarios like their feet are tangled or they're not balanced or whatever he then has the strength to push them over mm. so you can find that power in other ways like for even though greg inglis was like super strong i always thought greg inglis's balance was his best kind yeah. of asset because he was always ready to just bomb throw mm. that arm out and hit you with as much force as possible rather than like you could have a guy with more brute strength in the gym but his timing and balance isn't good yeah. um and so yeah it's a, it's a great point in regards to doesn't matter how big you are it matters how strong you are yeah um, yeah, that balance is a um, good point. I think about that a lot when I watch like the best of today's game. Like, for example, Teddy. Oh, it's like mate. he's always ready to change direction or accelerate. Yeah, and he never like overstrides yep. or anything. He's always ready to get yep. his foot down and like change direction. Billy Slater, how he used to run like real kind of low to the ground. Yeah, similar situations. Just always swerve, ready. A, Billy. So good, man. So good. He was my um, favorite player growing up. Eh? Oh, was he? Yep. So. What, what? Who did you support growing up? Who was your team? I was a big Knights fan. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, massive Knights fan. Like, loved um, Andrew Johns. And obviously, I, when they won in 2001, I think that was when I started going for them. Mm. Uh, I'll say not bandwagon, <laughs> but my cousins will say bandwagon. Because <laughs> all my family, like a lot of my family are Eels fans. Mm. Um, dad was a St George fan mum didn't really support anyone but the rest like all my uncles and cousins and stuff and we went down to the 2001 grand final and I vividly remember it but they try to tell me they don't <laughs> on the way on the train down they were all going for eels and I was like nah I'm going for Newcastle Yeah, got myself a Newcastle flag Yeah, and um, yeah great day to start supporting well, so the Knights. On, so it was before the game? It was before so the game. technically not bandwagon. Well, that's what, <laughs> I, that's what I say to them. And they're like, nah, you didn't do it till after they won. And um, yeah, and I can remember we had the 
biggest nosebleed seats. Like I can't even remember the game, but all I remember is my pop had his binoculars. Because <laughs> remember when um, ANZ used to be open before they closed it in? Yeah, yeah. the Olympics or whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was still open at that point. Mm. And uh, my pop was sitting up the top with his binoculars so you could see the footy because <laughs> we're that far away. Yeah, Far out. Oh, man. Um, okay, so... I guess you're playing rugby union. Did you at any point think rugby union was a pathway for you? Yeah, I did. I did. I still got like a a soft spot for it in a mm. sense. Like I reckon one day I would eventually want to go and like pl play. Yeah. Um, not for a while though. Not yeah. until like I, there's some things I want to do in rugby league first, like win a comp and, mm. and stuff before I'd consider it. Um, but yeah, I... I did. I, I was like in talks with Aussie Sevens, mm. and then that didn't really eventuate. Like they wanted me to come in for a trial, and then there was like a couple of those Shoot Shield teams that were keen to get me um, into their system. But then, uh, yeah, I had a good offer from the Roosters, and it was just like <clears throat> for a kid that age, like I, you know, to be in that program and be full time, where like with the other stuff, it would have been like part-time yeah. train a couple of days a yeah. week like yeah there was no real decision for me to make once the roosters like come in and, and were serious about do you it. remember the conversation with the roosters at all or how it all come about or not really nah but what happened was i played sg ball for the roosters mm. um in year 12 and that was from playing in that for southeast and like sully had come and seen me and uh they were the most accommodating as far as like, because there's a couple of other teams that wanted me to play SG Ball, um, Tigers in the South. And the Roosters were just like, we, we get it, you're at school. We just want you to train one day a week if you, if you can. Mm. So I was like, yeah, sweet. And then just did that where the others were like, we want you here a couple of days a week. It was oh, just going to okay. be like too hard. And yep. I would, only, I could only get to like, because we were training at Maddo Sports High. So dad would have to drive from like the Central Coast, pick me up from Knox and then drive me all the way to Maddo. Yeah. And, oh and yeah, and then wait around for a couple hours oh. while we train, then drop me back, back off to school and then drive back to the coast. So it would have been like unfair on, on mum and dad too, yeah, sure. to then commit to like a few days. So mm. yeah, the, the Roosters were good and we ended up winning that year. That was the um, grand final, we versus Penrith. That's 2015? uh 14 14 yeah and so that was with oh and in 2015 you went to the nyc team yeah 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 um who was in your 14 side do you remember it all yeah troll big troll big troll was, was he a in beast there? back then too yeah beast joey manu oh stop it um was troll playing fullback or center troll was then? playing fullback, yeah, he's yeah. A fullback scored yeah. the scored the match winning try for us of course he did yeah of course he did yeah he did it was, it was so cool um yeah, Troll, Joey Manu. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Like, there was guys like Johnny Tuivasa Shek and stuff. They mm. never sort of like played NRL, <coughs> but were really good at the time. Um, there was, yeah, just a couple of like freaks that, like Grant Garvey, for example, yeah. was our hooker. Mm. He played a couple of games at NRL, but um, he's not playing anymore. And yeah, just had a really good uh, side that. Like, yeah, a lot of the guys moved on. Mm. Um, and then that team carried over into the 20s. Mm. That first year, 20s, we didn't go that well, made the final. And then the boys ended up winning the second years of, year of 20s. But I'd played like six games of 20s at the start of the year and then made my debut in round seven against Penrith. I yep. think I played four games. I was 18th man for one, made my debut. And then because I played the rest of the year in, in our role, I wasn't allowed to go back and, oh, and yeah, play okay. 20s with the boys. But... Yeah, we had like this rivalry with Penrith because we had played the 18s grand final against them mm. and then played the 20s grand final against them. Mm. So, you know, these are guys like Nathan Cleary and Jerome and that sort of like James Fisher-Harris and yep. all those boys. Um, that it's are, crazy to think like Latrell and Joey are around the same age as those boys. Yeah. Because like Trell and Joey have been around. And For, obviously forever, yeah. Forever, one comps, rah, rah. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, so you beat them 18s, but they beat you 20s. Now the boys beat him in the twenties. Oh, really? Yeah, Come wow. back. It was like some ridiculous score at half time, like twenty four nil or whatever. Rad's mm. played in that grand final. Oh, Come off good. the bench. Denny Bedirus, he reckons he was playing hooker. Oh, so. oh stop it! <laughs> stop it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, was he always super aggressive in in the under twenties and that? Victor, yeah. yeah. I 
when I played actually ball, he was playing Harold Matthews. Yeah. And I used to love watching him. Oh, he was mate. so small, like playing yeah. lock hooker. He's still not that big. Nah. He really isn't. Like compared, relatively speaking, obviously. Yeah. Dense. He's dense. Yeah. He's big thick. Fella. He's yeah. A, he loves it. He does love it. But um, yeah, I used to love watching him. Him yeah. and Lammy because they were in that um, Harold Matthews team together and they just carved up. So mm. yeah. So he, was he a 13 back then or was, what, what did he play? Yeah, 13 and 9, I think his position was. Nine. Yeah. Come on. And he was just so small. Yeah. So small and skinny, but had the best, best tackle, tackle technique. Tackle techie and Love it. Yeah, we just smoked blokes. And then a couple of years later, got to play in his debut game too against, I think oh, that was against good. Newcastle. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, do you remember your first preseason with like a full preseason where you rocked up and you were a full time first grade up training with the boys? Yeah, I do remember it. And I was lucky in a sense because it was after that first year of 20s so i had a good year of 20s and then uh but i was playing with a ankle injury and what had happened was i'd somehow had like a taylor dome lesion they call it and had cartilage ripped off like my joint surface in my ankle oh so at the time i was like i didn't actually realize how um serious it was but uh, speaking to the staff the roosters physio he just sort of like I had no idea of of the seriousness and was like, it's good to see how like well it's healed because yep. I thought you might have carried that your whole career. But yeah, it was just like a divot of cartilage and I couldn't even train or anything. And then they ended up having to cut it out because it gets stuck. Yeah. So in the 20s, I was like not even training and then just playing oh. like, yeah, from, from the start. So which it's is wild. What do you go through when you're younger and you just don't think about it? Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was playing soccer, like I chipped like my tailbone and I didn't find out till like maybe half a year later they're like oh you've got like your tailbone's literally been chipped and I remember the, the play that when happened, it happened yeah. yeah but I was just like oh I'll be sweet or whatever yeah and like similar to yourself you bounce back quick oh, eh? whereas now you'd be like fucking on your deathbed yeah <laughs> yeah exactly or pump some anium phlegm so, yeah. oh, man. so you'd be sweet oh that's the one thing I don't miss is my guts feeling like they're going to explode from anium phlegms yeah I'm with you I um I try to stay off them as much as I can but got to like the point this year I had like a I got a tear in my patella tendon mm. and I was just like Got to do it. I have to do it. Do they have I any have better stuff it. now that doesn't smash your guts around? Yeah, I take these ones called Celebrex. I don't mm. know. Have you heard of them? No. Nah. No. Nah, they're like, uh, you got obviously the really strong ones yep. and then the pen, the. You got um, Voltaren. Voltaren, yeah. Yep. They're like your 50s or whatever. 10s, 20s and 50s yeah. or whatever, yeah. These ones, Celebrex are like 200s, but they're slow releasing. They're good. They're better on your stomach than yeah. anything else. Okay. Yeah. And I, I've tried the big ones, man, and I've ended up having to like tacky spew them up because yeah. they just took me for a ride. Oh, mate. I used to live on them. Yeah. And this is back before a lot of the science was in that you actually shouldn't take as – like you should, probably shouldn't take much anti flams because yeah. your body actually – Again, I'm not obviously not a bloody health, a physio or anything like that, or a doctor. But apparently, it actually makes it more inflamed after if you do it not naturally or so. Anyway, um, but yeah, your first preseason with first grade, did you rock up? And was there a session where you're like, "Wow, this is first grade"? Yeah, but this sorry, we got sidetracked there. But yeah. what I was saying was, so I had that surgery in the in the off season, mm. and then. Um, so it meant like my off season, I was doing rehab. Mm. So, and Jared had just done his knee. So me and Jared were just training together all off season, which was good. Cause it was like a good intro for me to have like a good connection with someone. Cause yeah. me and Jared got on really well. So it's a hard trainer, I assume too. Which yeah. Helps a lot. Yeah. Very hard trainer. And then when I come in to training, I sort of didn't feel like that uncomfortable. Yeah. And like, I didn't know anyone cause I had him and yep. then, but it just meant that I couldn't really run till after Christmas, but I think PC had done his hemi in, in that. Um, remember the semi final against Broncos? Did they throw it? Was it uh, Kenny Dow that threw that? It might have been that time? same game, yeah, yeah. But PC had been out with a hamstring and then mm. he ended up redoing it. So he was in rehab with me and Jared too. And this one day, Travis Tuma, uh, who was the head of performance at the Roosters, he's at Souths now, and he's um, pulled the skier out for me and PC. So we've got on it and got pumped. It was like 15 minutes, got pumped. We, by the end of it, we're both, there's this, like a bin. He's on one side and I'm on the other and I'm just going, Ugh, and then he oh. would go and we're spewing. <sighs> and then Travis then pulls out the ski egg, but only one of them. Yeah. He goes, Connor, come over here. And I've like looked at him and I'm like, like <laughs> surely rattled. Not. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> surely not. Yeah. And he goes to me, when you've played 200 fucking games, 
I'll like let you off early yeah. too. Yeah. And he goes, and then he's like, PC, you're done. Oh. So it was like 15 minutes on the Head ski noise. erg. And then he pulled out his salt bike. Oh. <laughs> and it was 15 minutes on the salt bike. I was so broken after oh. that. <laughs> and it's just mind games to see whether you'd silk and like not do it and that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, exactly. Right. It was just mind games. And um, yeah, he was awesome for me in the early days, Travi. So mm. um, yeah, that was probably like the first session where I was like, wow, this is, this is what we're doing. And then over time, you know, you start to just get, you don't get used to it, but you get a bit battle hard. And so when yeah. these things do pop up- You just roll with the punches. Yeah. Really. You just don't think about it yeah, too you much. Go, you know what? It is what it is. The one thing that I used to hate, like I didn't care how big the session was. Like if you said, this is the session, and it was the fucking hardest, longest session ever. I'd be like, sweet, all right. I hated when they would just spring shit on you and just be like, oh yeah, by the way, we're doing this. And I'd be like, like that wasn't the plan. Like that's, that's not, not the, the plan. plan. Like you, yeah. you, you gave us a task, we've done it, but it is good at making you, getting in the mindset of anything can happen and you've got to be ready for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you have a session that you can remember from when you started? Um, oh, I remember the early, like, so when we were training reserve grab at the Clydesdales, I think we did like 40 100s or something like that, wow. 40 or 50 100s. And just Pete blokes spewing up everywhere and fucking, it was just, it was like just people were decimated all over the ground. <laughs> and like, it's just so long. Whereas nowadays the, the fitness sessions are usually anywhere between, they can go like 14 minutes or they might go 30 minutes max. Yeah, the this blocks. Is, yeah, 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 like little blocks like, boys, we've got seven minute MAS. Then we've got some ball Footy, work, yeah. another seven minutes, ball work. Another, you know what I mean? It's usually like that or a 1.2K or whatever. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, it was just like, all right, boys, we've got an hour of fitness, go. And it would just be like long running, no sprinting, no no speed work whatsoever, just grindy stuff. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, things like a 40 or 45 100s, it was f torture. Yeah, that sounds crazy. Um, and then also I remember my first preseason putting on literally like 10 kilos or maybe even more. And I had really? like stretch marks in that because I was so little. I was like 70 kilos. I'm about 5'11". So skinny as. What were you doing? Just eating heaps or? Yeah, just getting smashed full of protein and just farting up a storm <laughs> on the protein. How <laughs> bad is you, that? Your guts would have been. Oh, but how bad is preseason when all the boys are on the protein and that? Yeah. And everyone's just farting and stinking and gross. Yeah, it's a gross like, environment oh. to, to be in. A and then Susan Boyle rocks sweating. up. Sweating. Susan Boyle rocks up, mate. Clean yourself. Stop R getting boils and that. Ringworms oh, too. Oh, bro. At least with like ringworms, it looks gross, but they don't do anything. Yep. But if you get a, a, a boil, yep. oh, Mate. For like a week, man, in that things. area, you yeah. get that swollen and you, Some people, hot. We, we've, I've had certain, like some people not be able to train because it can push the blood around your body that's infected from a boil. Um, True. And also like once one guy gets a boil, someone else is getting yeah. it because it's so infectious. Yeah, for sure. Uh, mate, yeah, preseason is such a, you're so, like you got chafe, you got injury, <laughs> like everything is fine. Your, your, your skin's all red and raw. And, yeah. Oh, mate. Um, but it makes you definitely makes you battle hard. That's what I'm just like thinking about it coming up soon. I'm like, sorry, bro. I've just triggered. I've just triggered you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why. Like after we, you know, we had that 26 rounds played so good, and then we lost. Oh, and then I was like, all that for nothing. Are you serious? <laughs> like an, another year now. I've got to yep. go to another preseason. Like, yep. <sighs> straight away. Yeah. Oh. Um. Okay. So that that preseason. Was that 2015 or 16 that you did the full preseason with the first grade? That was 2015 leading into season. Yeah, leading into 16. Okay, so w yep. did you get any feeling that you might make your debut that year or not really? Nah, to be honest, I was like fourth on the 5'8 depth chart. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I was the last. <laughs> I'll be filling in at center and yeah. wing. and But then uh, it's funny because what actually happened was me filling in all these spots, I was actually training like good there. Yep. And then I remember Robbo said to me like halfway through the year and was like, because you were going so well in centers and wing and fullback and he's like, I knew I could play you because you could literally cover yeah, all those spots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially a bench spot if you come off the bench. Yeah, exactly, which was cool. But because we had, um, so Jackson Hastings, mm. um, Jaden Nicarima just been signed. So he come down on like, a big deal. Yeah. Tyler Cornish was the other one. He like he, he was ahead of me. Um obviously PC was there, but PC was suspended for the first uh this was after the Australia Day thing. Yep. Eight games I think it was. Yeah. So the halves were Jacko and 
Jaden to start with and then we didn't go great. I think we lost like maybe our first five games on the trot and I'd played really good my first couple games of um, 20s, yep. played four games, but I did play the nines that year, which was mm. cool because <clears throat> Robbo sort of said to me like if I can get back from my ankle injury and I'm, I'm moving well, like he'll pick me in the nines. Yeah, okay. So that was like my goal for the year. I just yeah. wanted to play nines and mm. then um, have, a, have a really good 20s year, maybe play a bit of cup. Yeah. And then we struggled, PC was out. And I remember one day, because my ankle would flared up oh. and they were like to me, we don't want you to play 20s um, just because your ankle, we want to look after it. But you're on standby for first grade. <laughs> and I was like, what are you, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then because Aiden Guerra was like about to have his kid. Yeah. So they're like, if Doss has his kid, oh, like you're right. in. <laughs> and then I was like, geez, I actually must be close. Yeah, yeah. And then went back, played a game of 20s, had a really good game. Next week was proper 18th man. Mm. And then we lost um, to the Warriors. I remember Golden Point, Roger had just gone to the Warriors. Okay. Left the Roosters. And do you remember when he scored that try in Golden Point to win the game at Central Coast Stadium? Oh, fuck. I can't, even, I can't remember it. No. Yeah. Was it, it was a mad try. Yeah. But like, I was so nervous for 18th man. Yeah. I just remember <laughs> like being out there, making sure I get my kicks on and stuff. And then, because I... I'm from the Central Coast, so like all my friends and family yeah. were there <laughs> to watch me warm up. Yep. And um, <laughs> yeah, and then the next week, uh, yeah, he called me into his office, maybe on like the Monday or the Tuesday and said, I'm gonna debut off the bench this week. So Shit. that was pretty crazy. And I so was shocked. Uh, de debut against the Penny Panthers. Yes. So you would have seen Cleary, was Cleary debut yet? No? Nah, nah. Soward and like Wallace were the halves at that oh, point yeah, in time. Oh yeah, Wallace, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you remember, you know, from the debut specifically? Anything at all? Yeah, heaps. I remember Robbo was telling me, he's like, mate, I'm thinking second half for you. I'm not sure exactly where you're going to go on. He's like, I might put you on at nine or whatever. And then seven minutes into the game, Jade and Nikarima got knocked out. God. Oh my God. Yeah, and then everyone just looked at me and I was like, oh shit, I'm on here. And <laughs> yep. then, yeah, so I was into the game straight away, which was really cool. And first touch, I was so close to scoring. Oh, yeah, so close to scoring. Um, <clears throat> just got tackled short mm. and then made a couple of tackles and I was like, I think I can mix it with these yeah, guys. Like it's not as hectic as I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it's such a goal and like a pinnacle. It's almost on like a big pedestal. You don't yeah. know if you're up to it, but you always – want to achieve it yeah. and then yeah once you sort of it's not as daunting once you get into the game and make a couple of tackles well you realize oh these are just human beings like me yeah Whereas before you think that they've got this crazy weird strength that you don't mm. know like even when you've been training with the first grade squad you think that everything is going to be too strong for you or too fast for you and then you get there and, and the first contact you're like oh that's like that's like almost like q cup to a degree um anything else from the game that you remember did you just win or lose no we lost we um very close to winning. And then uh, Jamie Soward, I remember like the last five minutes, we we're down by a couple points. Just literally repeat set, repeat set, repeat oh, set. Put just put on a, on a clinic, yeah, yeah, just to put the game away. Like was, yeah, got a real lesson in controlling the game. Mm. Um, yeah, we didn't even get an opportunity to, to try and score, so. It's such an underrated thing like, it's not the flashy play or whatever, but an experienced half knows how to close a game. And mm. Like just puts you in a position where you're like, oh, sweet. Can't. Yep. I mean, look at the grand finals, Nathan Cleary. Like he knew how to put so much pressure on the Eels that they just had no shots to fire. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so you make your debut. Uh, what, what was the phone call like to your parents in that? Like to, to say that you're going to play for the famous Sydney Roosters? Yeah, they were so stoked. Yeah. So stoked. Um, my nana... Pop was like a big one too, Ned and Pa. Pretty sure they started crying. So yeah. yeah, they were pumped. Everyone was so happy. I think it was like a hundred people that came from Avoca. Oh really? <laughs> and like, yeah. Fuck they had like buses and stuff Fuck. from Avoca down <laughs> to the game. That's like crazy. Big coaches, which is pretty cool. So Wow. Heaps of friends and are stuff. You're the most popular man in Avoca or what? Nah. Are you the, nah. Ma are you the unofficial mayor <laughs> of Avoca? <laughs> nah, no way, but um <laughs> It's a tight, tight knit community. So, yeah. yeah. And a lot of those people were like, everyone that, you know, we all come up with, played footy with, yeah. surf, like in the surf club with. So, same as Starlo, like, same thing when he 
debuted for Nui, he had a ton of people drive up there as well. So. Wow. Did you get the numbers so you had more people drive down? Nah, I don't actually know the numbers. I don't know the numbers. Because that's the unofficial mayor of Avoca. <laughs> Whoever had more people come down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, you obviously make your debut against the Penny Panthers. Uh, then round 13 against the Tigers, you score your first try. Yeah. You remember the first meeting? Everyone remembers yeah, their first meeting. Of course I do. Uh, Aiden Guerra got hit short. I was playing fullback this game. Stop it. Yeah. Uh, what are the fullback? What are the fullback? What happened? I think this was the year Latrell was playing fullback mm. and he might have got injured. It was like a wet as day against mm. the Tigers. Torrential rain. And yeah, Dos got hit short and then I just was like running a sweep and just supported through the line and he just put a little gift on my chest. Yeah. Jeez, it felt good. And then I remember that game, uh, Fox was playing and they kicked the grubber in the in goals and I come across and like dived on it. And then I think um, Fox had like come in to tackle me and then my pants had like slipped all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember Fergo picking me up by my pants. Oh, the great Yeah, Fergo. and my crack and everything was out. <laughs> <laughs> As a young fella, you were like, oh shit. Yeah, I know, I was so embarrassed. Oh, and then Fergo picking up by your pants yeah. to make it even worse. Um, okay, and also in December, you extend your Roosters contract from the end of 2017 to 2018. Yep. Was that like... Was that your first full-time contract where you went in the top 25 or were you still outside of the top 25? That yeah, no, nah, that was first full-time contract because I was on a 20s deal yeah. getting matches when I was playing grade, which was sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then went on to – so I had the deal for the next year. Mm. I can't remember if it was top 30 or whatever, but I ended up upgrading that one and then extending for the year. So, yeah, I was so stoked, you know, like it was where I wanted to be and then um, – yeah, obviously I didn't end up staying for the 18th season, so... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 2016, 17 rolls around, um, and you were named player in, of the tournament <laughs> after the Roosters win. What, like... I mean, I know it's I know it's the nines, but still, fuck, there's, a, there's, some, there's guns playing and you got player of the tournament. What was that like? Yeah, it was pretty cool. <coughs> we uh, had a shocking first game. Um, I remember I threw an intercept to Kale and he ran the, ran oh, the leg. Oh, no. Does he let you leave that down or what? Yeah. <laughs> he does now. He does now. Um, <laughs> but initially he was into me about it. But um, I remember it was funny because Justin Holbrook was like sort of looking after it. And then ro obviously when we got over there, Robo coached. But because we would do like nines boys go, you're going to go do some – Nine, nine stuff, stuff down yeah. the end of the field, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Rest of the crew roll through all the weather. And then uh, uh, Justin Holbrook kept going to me, you're going to get – I know you're going to get um, – we're going to win and you're going to win player of the tournament. He kept no saying way. to me the whole time, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like – I didn't actually think it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Had that shocking first game. Mm. And then, um, then we started to get a bit of a roll on and, yeah, it was just good fun. Like we, we had a pretty handy side. Guys like Toops and Orbo was playing <clears> – <throat> Paul Momorowski, um, <clears throat> Latrell. Oh, yeah. Big fella. Bernie Lewis. Um, had like a – Chris Smith is at Penrith now. He was really good for us. Had a really <clears throat> mobile team um, but fast. Yeah. Fast side, which, which is important in that. And then, yeah, we just started to win more games, win more games. Got through like just against Melbourne. Bernard ran the length off the kickoff. Yeah, is he? Here at the yeah. Time? I think I was, remember that try. That, the Odell Beckham look he yeah, was going for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bernie, he um, is up from Cairnsway, I think. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So cousins with um, Gideon. Remember Gideon Geller Mosby? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was him and. Really yeah. quick, I think, wasn't he? Yeah, scored like 30, 40 tries in the 20s one year. Oh, stop it. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, so you, what was it like winning? Did you get a chance to celebrate at all? Like, did you just get on the beers or what? Yeah, we got on the beers. Um, yeah, just back at the. Team, team room, I think we might have went out, but everything was sort of closed by the time it was all over. But, yeah, it was such a cool experience. I reckon the first year definitely helped my transi transition in the first grade. And then that second year sort of, yeah. Sort of give you confidence. Yeah, sure. heaps, heaps of confidence. And just like being even able to play uh, Eden Park was – Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember, like, it was such a cool environment. Not really – didn't feel like playing, like, Right, like a rugby league game. It felt like more like a festival atmosphere. Yeah. Like the crowd was pumping music and stuff. But 
yeah, if they I haven't been able to play one since, I don't think. So like I missed one at Newey because I played in the Indigenous All Stars. They wouldn't yep. let me play both. So yeah, it's something that, you know, if there's a nines tournament in the near future, I'd love to have another run around again. Get at a, a double player of the tournament. <laughs> go, go for the <laughs> um, Okay, so two thousand seventeen. Uh and on uh twenty fourth of July you sign a three year contract with the Newey Knights. Mm-hmm. Uh, after seeking a release from the final year's contract, did you seek a release or was it the club? No, nah, I, I seek the release. Originally, they weren't going to let me go. Mm. It's it just, um, yeah, so I, what happened was we had, um, he started to like transition me into fullback a little bit. Mm. And then, um, because Mick Gordon was there. Mick Gordon got injured, so then I ended up playing like a heap of games at fullback this year and was going really good. Um, but then the Roosters got the opportunity to sign Teddy. And <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, don't, like. you don't uh, turn down Teddy. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no the way. great man. The great man. So, um, yeah, and then I just felt like – and I, I, I rushed, it, rushed this decision. I reckon I should have stayed in hindsight. It's a beautiful thing. But I was just like – I wanted to just get out there and, you know, lock down a starting role for myself, but I probably should have just bided my time a little bit more. And mm. cause I, I went up to Newcastle and yeah, I don't think I was ready for it. And mm. I reckon if I had a couple more years under guys like Luke Keary and Teddy and all of that, uh, I probably would be playing five, eight or fullback like, yeah, yeah somewhere. But um, yeah, I was in a rush. So um ask them for a release like no good and then eventually um they come around and yeah i remember having this big conversation with uh robbo and yeah he was understanding of it so they were kind enough to let me let me go and then um yeah headed up to newcastle and i remember um nick when i was like leaving was <coughs> always like you know if um, there's ever a chance for you to come back, we'd yep. always take you back. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then last year, I was like, I remember that conversation with Nick. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Nick, remember? <laughs> <laughs> when you said this to me, I hope you weren't just being nice. <laughs> yeah. um, just quickly on Robbo, what's Robbo like to work with as a coach? You know, he's always got three premierships, a bunch of minor premierships. Mm. You know, what he's done is incredible. What, what does he do that's, I guess, unique for him? Yeah, I think he's so detailed, mm. so detailed, but doesn't like miss. Sometimes you can get coaches that are really detailed, but then they miss like the um, ability to, you know, like pump the boys up or yep. yeah, get them going. and The intangible part of rugby league about yep. just getting the boys fired up yeah. and ripping in. Yeah, and... But I reckon he has like the best balance of of both of those things. Yeah, yeah, and he's just super chilled, to be honest. Super chilled, um, and then on the training paddock, he's like, <laughs> yeah, different, different. Yeah, beast. he's a different beast. It's so funny as the season started to like go more and more, his intensity at training would start to like. He was like locking down. Oh, get, getting even <laughs> yeah, more yeah, 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 Far yeah, out. yeah. Wow. So he was like as we started to, especially when we were like putting ourselves in a really good position to, um, you know, play finals and stuff. He like, you know, that um, meme where the video game player leans forward. Oh yeah. 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 When it's yeah. <laughs> when it, lean back when he's chill yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah, okay. he, he come forward and he was yeah driving the boys pretty hard. So it's uh, it's interesting because roosters are so good at timing their run, you know, mm. it's, even 2018, they struggled a bit at the start and then they like, towards the end of the season obviously went into incredible form even this year as well struggle to start incredible form and it's interesting to hear that even he gets more intense as the year goes on so i guess it sounds like he's even personally preparing for the business end of the season as well um does does he do anything tactically you don't have to be specifics but tactically different to other coaches or he has obviously he does things tactically different because every coach is different but i mean is there any method of teaching that he does differently to other coaches uh there's a couple of things that he does differently but i, I won't get into them no, no, i don't want to give, I don't give it away <laughs> um but it's pretty cool like short sort of added a new perspective to the game that i didn't have before yeah even like when i was here in 16 and 17 uh it wasn't like that so mm. um 
yeah, it was pretty cool to get that new perspective on things. But um, and then one thing he does really well is like tie everything into themes. Yep. So like themes for the year, mm. um, and then like everything, like all our, uh, you know, you get like your one percenters and all that mm. stuff tie back to the theme, and yep. like every week we'll, you know, show different like might make up a video clip of like that relates back to the to the theme and theme of the year yeah well, it's like uh, i was told by i think it was minicello i think it's t- 2013 at the start of the season he said boys we're not a second half side and then like the whole whole year was focused on their second half yeah and then in the last game grand final they literally won the game in the second half it's crazy um you know a similar one when i was at the broncos we had this theme i think it was 2006 i think it was and it was just whatever it takes yeah, and everything was built around. We will literally do whatever we need to do to win the comp, and obviously they won the comp. Just Love fucking that. holding pads. <laughs> it was just holding pads. <laughs> yeah, he um, he's very spiritual too, mm. which is cool. Yeah. So like, we had a theme that was like about warriors and mm. stuff. So, um, but I remember even this year we had a leadership camp. Um, and there was like maybe eight or ten of us that went to. Uh, we have this guy, Valan, that works for us and he's a, almost like a spiritual guy. does like breath work and, yep. and mindfulness with us and stuff. Trying to connect the mind and the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we went and stayed at uh, Valan's farm where he runs like retreats. So he yeah, did that good. for like a weekend, right? Yeah. So cool. Were you feeling like when you left like zen kind yeah, of? Yeah, so yeah. zen. Like no phone because there's no yeah. service. Yeah. Like, In nature. And we did all leadership stuff as well but then incorporated it with like – would get up in the morning and have like a breathwork class yeah, and then like mad. different things like have you heard of a sweat lodge um no no nah, it's like a it's like a sauna but a yeah lodge. like a native uh, american tradition i think they do okay. it on um yeah uh is it yellowstone yellowstone there's a, sh- there's a movie uh, show called yellowstone yeah I mean, have you watched it no, no i haven't watched it Don't they do it one, one episode it. yeah it's a, it's a great show okay. you should watch that it's okay another note but um yeah we did like a sweat lodge which is they they used to build like these, or they must still do it. It's like a tent with all like rags and stuff. Mm. And they use bamboo or whatever to create the shape and then go cook a fire and cook all these rocks. Yeah. And basically heat them up till they're hot enough, dig mm. a hole in the ground inside the thing. Yeah. And then they bring in the rock and it's like this big ceremony and pour water. Yeah. And it's literally like a big sauna. Oh, right. Yeah. But we did this like we got really deep around like the fire as the rocks were cooking and everyone yep. had to like talk about some yeah personal, personal stuff, stuff like yeah. Yeah, yeah it was just things that i'd never have done around rugby league yeah um but it's cool how he wants you to be he, he talks about you know good being good men mm. first and then yeah yeah which is like something that he really focuses on so yeah it's uh like the standards you can take your standards anywhere really like if you can set yourself up as a good man with standards integrity mm. you know all of that kind of stuff that that translate to footy fields like you know very rarely do you see obviously you get some dickheads in teams or whatever but good teams are usually filled with at least a lot of really good men you yeah. know there are rogue people that you know whatever but mostly there's a core group yeah. of good core group men that lead the, the boys around um Okay, so so 2018. So you said you, you wish you had been maybe a little bit more patient. It's it's interesting because like I, I was similar myself. When you're younger, you're just like so. I better be. Pl- I should be playing in NRL. I should be playing in yeah. NRL. And you're looking across your shoulder, and you know he's 21 and he's played 40 games, and you've only played 20 games, and you're going like the same thing happened with me. Like I was like 19, turning 20, going, well, I should be like, you know, playing in NRL. How this, old were you when you debuted? I think 19. It's pretty and sick. S- and so the the reason why I'm saying I was so bad at it is like I'd literally only been playing footy for a couple of years. Like I should have yeah. been patient and been like, mate, you got 15 years to sort everything out. Just be patient. It's really interesting like that a lot of young players go through that similar situation where you go, you know what, if I had to just back myself and learnt off the best, I would have been in a, a maybe a better spot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so you do, you do go up to Newcastle and I guess – what, what's the because Adam O'Brien had, had he become the coach yet? Nah, so I, Nathan um, Brown was the coach at that stage. I signed to play yeah under under Brownie, and I, I signed as a five eighth, and this sort of like straight away was like 
five eighth and then go to hooker in games oh. and like yeah, yeah i just yeah didn't really get the time to like just get that spot down. get that spot because yeah. i was then having to worry about to play in other positions so mm. yeah that bit was a little bit frustrating but i struggled with injury my first couple of years and it it's definitely um made me who i am as far as like my preparation and mm. um prehab now Rather than rehab yeah yeah because like i don't even know if i used to stretch to be honest mate I'm, I, I was that like rat's yeah. ass oh bro <laughs> yeah i like what i was uh, maybe you were similar whatever you put in front of me as a coach i did it and i did it fucking 100 miles mm. an hour anything outside of that i was like i'm done yeah i'm done like i'm not getting told to do anything so i'm just sitting there doing nothing whereas it can't be like that yeah. it's gonna be 24 7. no nah, it does exactly right and i i would train hard like i would always pride myself on being one of the hardest trainers yep. and wanted to be the fit i always wanted to be the yeah, fittest same. bloke in every team i would get i would sting if someone beat me in a fitness yeah same <laughs> same same bro. <laughs> <laughs> just one lap too like, yeah if someone beat me in one lap i'd be filthy i, I wanted to win every <laughs> single one and i used to fucking hate the people that would be at the back the whole time and, and then, then come the come one. hard for the last ones yeah oh, mate that yeah. used to f make me furious yeah you're getting a spray if you do that oh bro seriously this it made me so mad and anyway sorry yeah so you, you, you yourself initially really hard trainer but you just probably didn't do the extra stuff yeah you know? just like the body resilience and stretching i never valued stretching until the last couple of years and mm. um yeah so like my first year played like the first three games uh round three with us and the roosters and then ended up sublaxing my shoulder and then then about 10 minutes later sublaxed it again oh yeah it's done skis. yeah so it was done so, so sublax just for people listening is just dislocating and popping back in yep yep mm -hmm. and then so i thought i was gonna have to get a rico or whatever but turns out um, I, I didn't just yeah. had to rehab it. So missed like the next, I can't remember if it was about six or eight weeks mm. and then eventually come back and, um, then started to like really find my feet. And I was pretty sure I was just playing five eighths at that time. Mm. Um, and had probably my best game against the Titans. I remember, um, set up Skidzy for the winning try. And then I walked off the field mm. and I sat down and then like all of a sudden I couldn't get up. What? I was like, it was my groin. I was like, what the hell have I done? Yeah, yeah. And then, cause nothing in the game made me yeah. feel like I had <laughs> torn my groin or anything. Yeah. And then, yeah, got a scan. Turns out I had a torn adductor. Oh. But it was like not fully torn. Cause you want to, you want to rupture them. You don't want to partially tear them. Yeah. Cause they're, cause eventually like, they'll go in and they'll just cut them and snip them and then they'll just let them heal. Yeah. Have you done that No, before? I haven't. But even like um, your medial, sometimes they, you know, when you do like a grade two or whatever, they'd rather you just do a grade three because they can just get straight in there and operate on it. Yep. Um, but I haven't done that, that injury before now. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> then I try to play the next week because they were like to me, they go, oh, well, if you just fully snap it it's all good it's better anyway oh so and then i remember a captain's run i went down to do a pass and um pop again and i was like nah i'm no chance of playing yeah so then they rehabbed me for like the next four weeks and then got back for the last game against cronulla no second last game against cronulla and 10 minutes in i took a run felt it pop again straight away <sighs> and then played like the next I think I got to like the fiftieth minute yeah. in the just after half time and then they just took me off. <laughs> they were like, you're, you're useless, mate. So <laughs> uh, um, yeah, mate, it's just yeah, sometimes you just especially when you're younger, like you, if you had been a bit older, you'd be like, Oi, you should not be playing. Take the rest now. Yeah. Cause it's gonna get worse. Same mm -hmm. thing happened with my hammy. I, don't get me wrong, I was getting pressure to play. Like I didn't want to I was umming and ahhing about playing. They're like, No, no, play. So I do, boom, warm up, Gonski, six weeks. Uh, my ribs, same thing. They're like, you know, you should play, you should play. Go back and play, get shot in the ribs around 70th minute, the, the needle wears off, all of us anyway, so. Ouch. It's, it's such a fine balance because you've got to be tough as a rugby league player and sometimes you do have to push your injury, but it's finding the balance between being stupid yeah, and being good to your body so that you can be here for a long time. Yeah, exactly, because you know, you only do get a certain amount of time yeah. and you don't want to 
make it shorter. <laughs> and also like once you cross that white line, there's no excuse. Like yeah. you literally could have a shoulder that needs a reconstruction, but that's, no one is going to say, oh, you, you needed a shoulder Rico. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's tackle. all good. You, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's, I, th- I think sometimes young players should be just a little bit more selfish about their body because in the long run, it's going to be better. Anyway, so that first year, just fully injury. Really yeah, I had a couple. I ended up having to get a, they call it a green reconstruction. So oh, what was that like? Yeah, it was pretty intense. I've got this big scar that runs from like sort of just below my belly, belly button on that left-hand side all the way down to the uh, the base oh, of yeah. my uh, <laughs> scrotum. A noose? A noose. Gooch? <laughs> a <laughs> gooch, yeah. It's like a, uh, like, if you know, when girls get a C-section, it's mm. like a, like that kind of they just cut through wow. it, yeah but that was that were you wigging out about the process like to get cut into like that there because like sure. was one thing but cutting through your like gut area yeah and i was like wigging because i was going to be nude and i didn't know oh like, yeah what the what the surgeon was going <laughs> can i get all do <laughs> <laughs> and then um they ended up having to like attach my abs to my groin again so it was like a bit of a complicated process um but that went all good. That healed really well. And then the next, that preseason started training at fullback. So me and Kalen had swapped positions. Yeah. And the plan was for me to go to fullback, him to go f- to 5 eighth, And then, yeah, lasted like... Six weeks, I think? No, nah, well, two games. So I played against Pen... Uh, I played round one. We won against the Sharks. Then I played against Penrith. And I did my MCL. Oh. I know, it was just never ending at, yeah. at this point. Um, yeah, I did this, I did my MCL, like got tackled and I was scoring a try that then ended up, ended up getting disallowed. Oh <laughs> so it wasn't even worth God. it. Torture. I know. And, um, yeah, missed like the next few weeks of footy and, uh, <coughs> Kurt went to fullback the next week. I think he might've like dropped a few bombs or something. And then Brownie walked in the <laughs> team room on the Monday of week four and was like, Caitlin's playing fullback. <laughs> Oh, really? That's the end of it. Yeah. All right, I was like, we oh, fuck. <laughs> just did all this preseason yeah, to, the fullback. Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. play fullback. And then, um, yeah, come back, played 5-8. Um, we went on that mad winning streak at, yeah. at New We won like six in a row. And then Danny Levi got injured and they needed someone to play hooker. So That's yeah, so who it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so played hooker. You're, um, you're obviously, you know, good mates with Kalen. Did you get along straight away or was it – you know, like something that grew or... Because sometimes you meet blokes that initially like, yeah, don't, yeah. Really, <laughs> don't really like that guy. Yeah. No, I, um, I did get along with him initially, but I had a, uh, I had a girlfriend at the time, like, um, so... And she was like up in Newey most of the time. So I was mostly hanging out with her. Mm. And then as we sort of got like a bit further into year, like she was working and stuff. So then... I started to spend like a bit more time with him and I had a spare room at my house Yeah, and he would sort of stay weekends and stuff. And then eventually it just got to the point, like he was there four nights of the week, <laughs> staying before training and stuff now. And I'm yeah. like, mate, do you just want to move in? Yeah, just move in. Yeah. So then, um, or maybe I might've broke up with my ex and then he was staying. staying was, yeah. Yeah. So I just said to him, do you want to, do you want to stay, man? So now, so was this in the 257 house or was this in, yeah, so that was the 257 yeah. house. So initially you lived there by yourself and your missus would be there a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And just had a spare room for mates and stuff. Yep. Tom Starling stayed with me for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. While he was trying to find a place and then, yeah, it was awesome. We um, had so many memories in that house. It was served served its purpose very well it's good so how did it begin to come about obviously the 257 podcast fantastic everyone loves it the, the clothing everyone loves it how did that begin to like who who come up with the idea and what was the chat around that yeah uh we'd always joked kayla and i were like we should start a podcast i think this was like when you might have started doing your thing mm. ice was obviously doing the you know the rules stuff and I don't know if there was like any players doing it. Yeah. Like we should do it, man. Like yeah. it'd be funny as yeah. uh, there's no players doing it. Like it might be cool, something to do on the side. And they never did it. And then when COVID lockdown kicked off and they told us that like footy was done for the year, they're like, yeah, the comp's over. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be in lockdown for six months or something ridiculous, yeah. whatever they said. So like, what can we do, man? Like to do something. And then Kalen come out one day, he's like, bro, I just ordered some mics. 
Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> they're the worst, like... Yeah, the little Yeti mics or something like that? The little $100. Like? I think yeah. they were, like, even worse than Yeti mics. And they just sat there on the yeah, table. Yeah, just sat there on the table and we're like, yeah, cool, let's do it. And then, yeah, it sort of started from them. But how we come up with the name was, at that time... Uh, it was like when sports cards had hit it off. Yeah. And instead of I getting my own stuff and Kaylin getting our own stuff, we like chipped in like money together. Yeah. And had to make a profile for the website, ComC. And I was like, what do we call it? And I just thought, 257 Collectors. Yeah. And, I, and then he was like, 257 Collectors. Like, nah, Collective sounds better. 257 Collective. Yeah, man. So nah. it was like, because we were collecting cards, was yeah, like, it was yeah. called Collectors and yeah. then we changed it to Collective. And then, yeah. yeah, from there, it just turned into this pretty cool thing that, you know, we had a ball doing for a couple of years there. And so do you remember your first podcast? Yeah. We Awful. All, and like, did you realize how hard it would be? Like once you, you think about it a lot, you think about it a lot. Like, for example, I was like, would have been about 2015 or whatever. I thought about it, but I sat on the idea for like six months because I was just like, just like procrastinating or whatever. Then once you actually sit down to do it, you for, you don't realize how hard it is. Like it's not the hardest thing in the world, but yeah. it is. It's harder than you think it will be. Yeah, for sure. It's hard to ha have a conversation with a mic in front of you, mm. and then it's hard to have a conversation. This is what we found. It's hard to have a conversation with someone that you're with every second of yeah. the day, yeah. and you're like. We've literally know everything that we've yep. been up to. Like we've we spoke about, about everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why it was really good when Croaks came in because mm. he sort of offered that third perspective and it all flowed a bit better. And then, um, then we, you know, started to do like little topics and, and uh, segments and stuff, which yeah, was a bit more like interesting and fun. And yep. yeah, really enjoyed it. Eh? One thing that like with podcasting, a lot of people think, you know, and, no disrespect to anyone, but they're like, man, we have the sickest chat. We should have a podcast, <laughs> man. Like think about the shit we talk about around the beers. And it's like, honestly, bro, I don't think anyone would give a shit yeah. because one thing I learned really early on is people don't really care about your in jokes with your mates. They want to talk about things that are topics to the world or to them. Like, yeah. so that's why rugby league's so good. Cause like I'm talking about the Raiders. There's a bunch of Raiders fans that love the Raiders. Whereas if I'm talking about just my, you know, my jokes with my mates about the Raiders. It's not as not as funny or whatever. Mm. Um, and I think that's like one of the keys to podcasting that's is like you point. need to talk about podcasts that are universal. It's it's a you can build those inner jokes within the podcast. Like I'm sure you had plenty with like what was one of the jokes? Was it with was it with Croaks uh, intros or something like that that he would stuff up all the time or something he would stuff yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, they, those are internal jokes that you build with the audience because yeah. they become your friends. Yeah, it's like a commu community. Yeah. It's so funny, like you just get sprayed off some people that listen to yeah. the show. <laughs> and you're like, what? Oh, okay, I get it. Like you listen to the podcast. <laughs> well, it's because it's really interesting because they spend hours with you. Yeah. Hours. So they know you. They know you as a person. Yeah. But obviously you don't know them. Mm. So to them, when they come up and say hi, they're meeting a mate. Like they you're with, you know, with bloke, for example. I'm with them a lot of people like six to seven hours a week. Yeah. They're listening to me talk. So like I, they probably listen to me more talk more than their mates and it'd be like similar with you guys they'd be fans of you guys that listen to you talk more than their friends yeah so there's that natural th feeling to feel like oh yeah he's my mate i know him or whatever yeah so then they just start throwing a bit of banter, banter about way. absolutely yeah. and and those inside jokes that we would have on the show like i remember like we always talk about how big croak's head is and stuff yeah and, and then, then he like, gets smashed. He gets sprayed and he's like, I don't know like how I feel about <laughs> I feel this. I don't know you, but I know why you're like yep. spraying me. Yep. But it still hurts. <laughs> well, it's like with the beak thing, I, I just had to roll with it because I'm yeah. like, look, it's there. It's the elephant in the room. I call it the eight mile tactic. So yep. if you say everything bad about yourself, then no one else can say mm. it about you. But yeah, some people will be like, oh, oh he can't be your beak. And they'll be doing these ones. I'll be like with my wife and I'll be like, that's funny, but like, I kind of feel ugly now and <laughs> to my wife, like she's looking at like, I'm, you know what I mean? But it's all part of it. It's an icon, it's man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the brand, bro. It's the brand. <laughs> um, okay, so then who come up with the idea, let's release shirts? Uh, I can't even remember. I can't, yeah, me or Kaylin, because um, I don't think Croaks was involved at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, and then what happened was we did that Europe trip. Yeah. I was like, why don't we just do like a world, because I love world tour shirts, they're cool. Mm. They're and just quietly, I have the number one shirt. Yes, you do. Thank you, thank you. You know, like the Yeezus, 
yep. tour shirts. Mm. Yeah, that was like the inspiration for them. And then um, I think because we both loved fashion and um, I was like, why don't we just try and do our own sort of stuff? And yeah, we based that world tour uh, shirt off our European trip. That was yep. all the stops like yep. where we did. And then the, the whole like marketing thing was just like photos that, of us on our trip and stuff. Yeah, yeah cool. And then we got out. Um, I remember Kalen's like, bro, why don't we see if we can get a plane to shoot the video from? <laughs> and then me and him are like ringing Newcastle airport, Maitland airport. <laughs> yep. And we're like, hey, um, is there any chance we could borrow a plane to like <laughs> shoot a video <laughs> clip in front of it? And then they were like, the Maitland airport, I think it was, was like, yeah come out we'd love to have yours how oh, good so then we went and shot yeah our video clip but it was like not a big plane it yeah, was like, a little plane but still yeah, toy I, thought plane. It was great. I thought it suited it more because like a big plane everyone would know if you know yeah but a little plane it's like kind of old school aviator kind of yeah, vibes bit of a vibe and yeah 100 percent. yeah and then we had like big plans to do uh heaps more stuff we wanted to do like consistent merch runs yeah. kind of like what you do but um yeah, hit a few roadblocks with uh, Kalen's Nike deals. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yep. what's the feeling like with that? There's nothing more mind-blowing when you put that live now up and you see, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people purchasing the shirts. What was that like the first time? Oh, like shocked. Yeah. Shocked. The amount of um, – yeah, because it went in like two minutes. Yeah, Because we were talking about it before and we said, bro, like – Reckon after a couple hours, if they're not sold out, we just say they're sold out, yeah, and we'll just give, give them away, mm. like whatever, yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, "Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> I'll um, should I make a graphic or whatever?" And I was like, "We'll just wait and see how yeah. they go, and then <laughs> if that happens." And then yeah, we were like in the WhatsApp with the guys that did it, and then yeah, literally uh, two minutes later, they messaged and they're like sold out, and I was like. <sighs> No way. Yeah. I was like, you're actually kidding me. Yeah. Surely people don't actually want Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was um, a very, very cool moment. Yeah. Sickest. Just sat there and we're like, hey, we have the sickest like community that yeah. love this podcast. And that's why I was so disappointing to finish it all. Mm. I remember last year, like when we were on the Gold Coast for the off season, kept running into people and it was never anything about footy yeah but it was always footy. i love your podcast yeah you bought like yeah it's crazy yeah and i was just so disappointing to not yeah, yeah. Be doing it's it. as i said podcasting is like it's so personal like you're, you're with them you're, yep. you're with them all the time um it's and it's so humbling as well to see how much people care mm. like to go out and purchase your kit is incredible yeah, that, that, that was, well, it. It was do you remember the first time you saw someone wearing it just randomly uh yeah i do can't remember where it was that I, I did take a photo of it. i think i was out yeah might have been in king street hotel yeah good the great king street yeah, hotel. yeah well great <laughs> king street and yeah i seen um i seen a bloke getting around in it there pretty cool had so, a dude like get a tattoo yeah 257 tattoo Sick. reese he was a good dude yeah <laughs> we took him to get it he told us he wanted to get it or something and then we're like we took him to our mate's tattoo shop and got it for him <laughs> we're like if you want it like we yeah, can take, take you yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think we've had a couple but there's been some people that they'll message like oh you can't be i'm fucking getting the bloke tat rah rah and i always message that oi bro just sleep on it for a few yeah. days and then if you want to do it then do, do it. it but please don't do it right now because usually they're fucking <laughs> they're charged on the up. Day, yeah going, fuck yeah let's fucking do it um okay so so yeah the podcast starts and like so obviously then with this, the clothing and that, uh, Kalen had that Nike deal. So very hard to, yeah, to, it's very hard. And it's understandable. If I'm Nike, I'm sitting there going, well, you know, we're paying you a decent coin. Like, and, you know. Great, great coin. Great coin. Well, <laughs> hey, I don't know what the price is, but I'm sure it's a lot. Um, so I can understand where Nike are coming from in that regard. It would suck though. Uh, but yeah, obviously, so the reason for stopping the potty was essentially it's just too hard to get done with all the boys being busy in that. Yeah, yeah. Don't want to uh, point any fingers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but There's nah. one really busy person. <laughs> um, yeah, we sort of like, because we were really close to signing with Spotify. I think I told you yeah, about yeah, that. I was, yeah, yeah. I was there for the ride. You were there for the ride. So that was going to happen. And then, yeah, it was just sort of, like obviously I'm the biggest reason why it's not going because I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that doesn't help. And then I think it just made it a bit hard for everyone. I feel I felt for Croaks, but because like 
you know, he was on a minimum deal or whatever and yeah. we we're going to get like some good cash yeah. for him. And I was like, that's and like, awesome, bro. You, he you know, if he's, that. if he's kept the potty going, like uh, Kalen's going to be a quazillionaire no matter what. Yeah. Um, but for you and Croaks, like this will be the biggest money maker easily of your life yeah, by 100%. a mile. And, you know, you could eventually earn millions in 10, 50, you know, five to 10 years. Yeah. Um, Just because start a beer like you and <laughs> <laughs> oh man you <laughs> rolling in that it. Pain, <laughs> trust me nah, nah no way no um, way no so uh, so yeah just a matter of circumstance like you know you yep. decide to go okay so newey uh 2020 um you you rupture your achilles in 2020 yeah. so like first two years you just torture yeah just torture when you rupture your achilles is this does would this be the darkest period do you think mm. For you, per- for you personally? Yeah, definitely the darkest period for me personally. It's so weird, like, because I did my syndesmosis. Mm. So we had the, um, that was the COVID year, played the two games, started the year really well. Like we were, we were on fire as a team. This was Adzi's first year. Yep. So we we're buzzing. And then round three uh, versus Penrith, that was that draw. Do you remember the draw at Campbelltown Stadium? Um where it was like a big drop kick a thon for the last, oh, and man. everyone kept missing. I'm sure if I saw two seconds of the game, I'd remember. Yeah, it. yeah. We had, the, it was the first game of the COVID, so there's no crowd. Yeah. And Bill kick out, big fella made a break. Oh, and then no. I've gone to like hit him low, and he's just bumped me. I missed time my tackle and just completely folded on my ankle, did my Cindy. Oh, Syndesmosis. Fuck. The uh, most favorite word at the moment no, eh? it's literally every game syndesmosis, syndesmosis i didn't even know what that word was two years ago yeah well it sounds like it's nothing like they say it's a high ankle sprain but you yeah. actually like it's fucking it you're hurts that much oh, bro, it kills <laughs> you're tearing like tendons and shit yeah yeah so i so i got my uh, i had that surgery so i was out for six weeks yeah and then come back and i had this like weird thing and i kept thinking about don't get a major injury. I don't know what it was. I don't yeah. I couldn't shake it. Really? Yeah. I couldn't shake it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, I knew, I just had this feeling like I was gonna, and I was yeah. like, don't get injured, don't get injured. And then played one game against Rabbitohs. We beat them. And then uh, back up at Newey, first in the dogs, Andrew McCulloch snaps his hemi, like completely oh, smashes yeah. it. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And I'd just come on and like five minutes later, Went to um, kick pressure from Marker and thought Luke Thompson, he was standing, he just played the ball, I just tackled him. Thought he tripped me over and I've like turned around and I was like ready fuck? to go, what the fuck? Yeah. And then look back and like everyone's 10, 15 meet, meters away running down the the field. And then I was like, oh no. Yeah, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, what's going on? And then all of a sudden like the blood just rushed to my, um, ankle or my Achilles and then I was like oh I've done my Achilles and yeah that was pretty tough very I definitely I felt like I learned a lot in that period though like I actually as bad as the injury it was and Mm. like as much as it rattled me at the time I'm really grateful that it happened because it helped me work on a lot of things like footy wise but also on a personal level too Mm. and I definitely improved a lot from having that and yeah, had my you know my best full season of first grade in 2021, where yeah. I got to play every game, and yeah, it was it was tough. Like the Achilles was tough, but and then doing it in the COVID bubble was tough too, because I couldn't. I was still in the bubble because yeah, I was yeah. in, having to rehab and stuff. So yeah, that was um, tough period, but I'm I'm grateful in a way that it happened. Mm, it's um it's crazy thing you're still only 26 like you got so much footy left in you mm. i'm sure at the time though it would have felt like oh you know i'm 25 or whatever and how much is this going to keep happening yeah and am i going to be able to play a full season because that's two whole years of pretty much injuries yeah and that was why i got so grateful for rugby league again yeah yeah and like my whole attitude towards the game changed and it went from like being stressed and you know, trying to control the result to like just letting it be and enjoying it. Yeah. And like I I started doing this every time I run out, I'll always like smile. Yeah. Because I'm like, fuck, how good is this? How lucky are you to be at all? Where I used to be like like real tight, serious, nervous. Yeah. But I'm just like, this is 
the best. Literally the dream. The best. Yeah. So every time I run out, I just make sure that like I think that. Yeah. And don't go the other way with it again. Mm. Mm. It's uh yeah, you do you get caught up in the whole thing and like, you know, you start treating it like a job and it is a job, but you gotta take stock and just be like, hang on a sec, this is the dream. Like I'm mm. gonna miss this if I don't ever get it to again. And you had the opportunity to miss it, so you love it again. Yeah. Um, you know, so that year, 2021, obviously the Knights reproach you and you decided to knock back the extension and sign with the Sydney Roosters. Like, was that a really tough decision? Because, like, you know, obviously you played really good that year, but I'm assuming the Knights are really loyal to you over that, you know, obviously you had a contract, but you've been injured for the past two years or did yeah. that not really play a factor in the, how much how tough it was? Yeah, no, it did. Definitely played a factor. Like, I loved my time in Newcastle, so... And I loved like living there. All the boys mm. I got so tight with, you know, like grew up with the Safs and stuff. So like, there's already yeah. that connection there. And then, yeah, it was, a, it's a real like tight knit group up there. So I think the hardest thing was like deciding to leave the boys. Mm. Um, but yeah, originally, and this is why like I did, cause I, I don't have a manager at the moment. Yep. Uh, and I didn't at that point in time i got uh rid of or my contract ended with my old manager and i decided not to re-sign it because i thought i was just going to stay in newcastle mm. and then when i first sat down with them like the offer was less than what, what i was on and i'd re-signed when i had my achilles <laughs> oh, wow. okay. yeah. yeah so i was like oh like yeah no nah, i'm not not gonna yeah. like they're negotiating that. aggressively with you yeah probably because you don't have a manager so they know yeah yeah and if you know i probably got what i wanted at that thing i would have wouldn't have even looked elsewhere yeah wouldn't have looked elsewhere and then i just sort of said like all right he, they were like we can't really move with it so i just said well i'm gonna do my due diligence have a look around and then that's where um i had a offer from super league and, and i was like seriously considering it because i was at that point where obviously you had had you know those injuries and was starting to enjoy my footy again but wasn't like was still like a bit not like fully confident in myself because of the, la the last yeah. few years so and i was thinking like you know what this might be a good opportunity because it was to go like over to play for st helens which and they're Dunstock, stacked yeah, yeah. and they have got james roby who was playing hooker but he's you know looking at retiring in the next couple of years so it was like and they were thinking you know come over and we'll play hooker and lock and um get roby to like teach you how to play hooker yeah because he's done it forever and i was like thinking i was single and i was like you know what it might just be because i've got nothing tying me here yep. just You're go over there for two years mm. uh learn all i can um and then I'm still only 27 and I could probably come back and yep. uh, play in the NRL again. And then, so I rang Robbo and yeah, I had this conversation with him and he sort of changed my perspective on like where I was at and what I wanted. And instead of like, he's in his mind, he doesn't like see me as like one position, but it's more about how I play the game. And, and he was like, I don't see you like being just a nine or, or whatever. Like you, you can play you anywhere, but it's how you play the game. And like, and then after that conversation, that's when I was like, well, you don't have <laughs> any, any room for me. And yeah. then he was like, well, I haven't just been pumping your tire tires up to not think yeah. about whether I can get you back here or not. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, give me a week or whatever. And I'll come back to you. And then yeah, come back to me. And then they're like, yeah, we can do it. And then the Knights, and then eventually, because I had like a couple uh, teams interested, my finance guy was like, I reckon you should, I've, I look after an agent, I reckon you should get someone, pay him a one-off fee, and just to like, because he, he obviously wants me to get as much money as I can. Yeah, yeah. So then I got this like agent to do this one-off fee for me. Um, John Carlo, he's a legend. And um, yeah, and then the Knights come back to like the exact, uh, off of what I wanted and I was like oh, oh no God. yep yep and then because we were in the sunny coast bubble 
I had like no family and stuff around and I was like living with all the Knights boys. Oh. And then I was like considering leaving and I just felt like so, I don't know. I felt like the worst bloke ever. Yeah. yeah it was a hard decision to make. And obviously I loved playing under Adzi. Like I, he really like simpl simplified my footy for me. And obviously I was playing the best footy I, I had in first grade consistently. And then, you know, there was like guys like Danny Badiris who I looked up to, yeah. who I was like super close with him and his family and then plus all the boys. And yeah, that's why it was the hardest decision that I've had to make was to leave because of the like relationships and, and the people there for sure. Mm. Mate, it's just there's so much to, that goes into the decision and like it's such a big call and are you making the right one? You're still relatively young in regards to negotiating, all that kind of stuff. So I guess with the Roosters, like is it, you know, is it like is the goal you want to win a premiership before yep. you head off that's that's the number one thing yeah before i consider doing anything else you know like because eventually you know whether it's like playing in europe or something like that like mm. you'd want to go and experience the world and um experience what you know rugby league has to offer but i'm still only 26 so yeah i've probably got plenty of time yeah i would like to do that in my 30s yeah yeah um but yeah i want to win a comp that's goal number one and then the other goal is still like I want to play State of Origin. Yeah, I felt like I was in a good position coming off like the back end of last year and I, the start of the year. Like for me, just sort of I didn't start the year well and I wasn't happy with how I was playing at nine, to be yep. honest. So um, I'll do some work over the off season because I, I need to because obviously Brendan's coming, but yep. I don't know if they want Brendan playing eighty minutes. Yeah, if you want him to be that powerful player that he is yeah so it's hard to do for 80 minutes so oh, i might need no, someone no to way. sub him yeah it's almost impossible. for 20 or 15 minutes yeah. so and then do my thing at 13 yeah or front row as <laughs> as uh robo says but <laughs> jared row. and that get so filthy oh really yeah because <laughs> they um it, like were taking the piss and robo was calling me and egan the yeah. modern day front rowers oh, <laughs> oh my god like he was so angry <laughs> And we had this really good thing going, Egan and I, when we're coming off the bench. Yeah. And then one week we had a shocker oh, <laughs> together. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, didn't, the, didn't the boys let us know about oh, that? Front row, eh? Front yeah. row. Yeah. Um, Where's your leg speed now, boys? That's what they kept saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what's a guy like Jared Hug uh, we're Hargreaves like? You know, obviously he's an enforcer on the field. What's he mm. like off the field? Yeah, super lovely and like soft soft natured yeah even um it's just crazy to think because he's a yeah. brutal man so family orientated beautiful <coughs> wife beautiful kids yeah um really like driven and uh he's doing like heaps of stuff with houses and um yeah his wife's got beautiful taste so they're like renovated a couple of places oh, really? and stuff yeah oh, good. i don't know if he has any uh input on <laughs> it <laughs> um but yeah like they're they're both um great people and like he's so awesome to have around the club drives the standards yeah takes boys with him mm. like i remember early days lindsey collins like jared would just absolutely smash him yeah Trying all to, the time just yeah. and then look at lindsey now like so good so good yeah yeah like he's done that with heaps of players through his career and mm. um yeah i was just so pumped to play to come back and play yeah. with him again because I, I know what he brings and um i know how good he is around like the team and stuff and then yeah i was it's been really cool to come back and play like and watch because i played with joey manu but when i was playing with him like in 2016 and 17 like he was sort of in and out yeah and then it was 2018 was his big breakout year, the one the year they won the comp. So I missed all that. So to play with him, like to how he is now, is like <laughs> yeah, bro, he's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, what about a guy like Suli? Uh, Freak, bro, what's going on there? Far out. How can you be like so big, so good, and so good looking? Yeah, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I saw him at the Dali M. He is so fucking hot. He's a star, man. Oh man, and he's like classic handsome kind of yeah and he's what 19 yeah 19 he's um so level-headed too which is like crazy for someone his age obviously uh, you know i've been lucky enough to be around like a couple of freaks at the age of 18 and 19 yeah. like but he's the most level-headed mm. and like <clears throat> driven out of all of all of them yeah that, I, that i've been around and 
yeah, like he's in training so early. Mm. You know how we're talking about stretching yeah. as a nine year old kid. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. He's like super spiritual as well. So like does a heap of stuff around his mind and yeah. Yeah. So, um, and like just got the mindset of a beast and you know, he's going to be, I don't know what he'll do, but he'll do great things oh, wherever he literally. goes on whatever journey he's on. But he's I'm such just, a, like a, a professional athlete. Like yep. he, he almost like a professional businessman athlete in a sense. Like he understands, it seems like he understands his body is a commodity yep. to a degree. Like it's, yeah, it's crazy how young he is. Um, the, the money off endorsements he's going to earn is going to be like yeah. stupid. stupid okay, what about when the <laughs> Wallabies were <laughs> like that, that talk was coming out. <laughs> Should have heard the voice uh, in the boys training. Yeah, yeah. Far, I yeah. was like, mate, surely make me agent. <laughs> Come on, man. Just one time yeah. deal. Come boys on, are like, oh yeah, inside center. What do you reckon? <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. Yeah, good. Um, okay. Ask all the boys this. Uh, favorite rapper of all time. Rapper? Yeah. Um, J. Cole. Yeah, he's a gun. Yeah, but he's I do love um, Biggie, Spores, Biggie Smalls. Yeah, so. he's like party music, I reckon. Like, fl- good, not party, but like flow with the boys hanging out, chilling out. Yeah. Favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time. Oh, that's a tough one. It's hard to go past, like, I think Step Brothers is an absolute yeah. classic. One of the great comedies of all time. Easy. Yeah. Um, Law Abiding Citizen though. Oh, it's a classic. Yeah, I was telling uh, my pop to watch that the other day, so I don't know if he did, but yeah, yeah, that's a cracker for sure. 100%. Mate, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. And I've got to say before I end, I hope 257 get back together. I'm a Me fan. too. Me I'm too. a fan, bro. Come on. Do I it know. for the fans, bro. I know. Come on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh, mate thank you so much for coming I appreciate it hey thank you for having me appreciate it man it's cool to see um, like I said before so stoked for you bro it's awesome thanks brother appreciate it thank you boom